Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chelsea and I'm a full-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Facebook Marketplace. And today I am here to take you on a little bit of a sewing tutorial. Um easy sewing tutorial I'm actually going to be using some heat and bond to adhere quilt pieces to the back of denim jackets and after that I'm just gonna go over really quick really quick whip with my sewing machine to just make sure those pieces aren't gonna go anywhere so let me kind of show you the supplies that I have and then I'll kind of take you along with me as I make these um, denim jackets. So I'll insert a picture here of like some previous ones that I have made and then I'll show you the jackets I have now that I'm gonna upcycle. Okay so first I have three denim jackets here and I think I have one more in that pile over there. Um, I have a gap size medium denim jacket. I have this one that's a size medium but it looks like more like a women's size large because um, I think it's a men's denim jacket but this one is 100% cotton which is really good for this project. This is a Levi's denim jacket. This one does have a little bit of stretch to it which isn't ideal but I think it'll be okay because it's just it's just a little tiny bit of stretch. The reason I say having a lot of stretch in your denim jacket isn't great for this project is because with the heat and bond, you don't want it pulling too much to where it'll lose its adherence if the fabric stretches too much. I think it'll be fine because these aren't like super stretchy, but I wouldn't recommend using heat and bond on like a really stretchy fabric. So anyway, I've got my denim jackets ready and I also have an old vintage quilt. Now if you look at this quilt, it's been very loved. You can see there's lots of little holes in it and tears and wear. So I've actually been <laughs> cutting away at it little by little over time. And what I've been doing is um, cutting out each individual square. And then I've been using a seam ripper. Um, this may have a more technical name, but it's just one of these. And I've been using the seam ripper to carefully take off. This is called a Dresden quilt. I don't know if you call it a square, but it's like this pretty floral looking detail in this quilt. So this is what they look like once you get it off. I use that little seam ripper. And then I've got some like tiny little scissors that I've also been using to help me take it off. And between just like the little scissors and the seam ripper, I'm able to take it off and it looks like this when it comes off. The back is, you can really see the, the seams, like the sewing skills of the lady who put this quilt together. It's all hand sewn and you can see all of her stitching and it's just so adorable. It's very thin and like, you know, it's vintage fabric, so it needs to be taken care of really well. So I have like six of them already cut out here and yeah, this took some time. I actually did this the other day when I was sitting down watching a movie and I just like, <laughs> sorry, I got cut off there. But what I was saying is I just seam ripped very carefully while I was watching a movie one night off camera because it's, it's pretty tedious. You don't want to damage the quilt pieces. I really want to keep the integrity of the quilt pieces together. And there's a few that I, I was not quite so careful. All it took was like the slip of a finger and he would end up like tearing one of the quilt pieces. So anyway, I did that the other day and I have all the pieces. So then I went on Amazon and I ordered some heat and bond and this is what it looks like. Um, this is some scrap paper I have here, but it's heat and bond ultra hold. And it's basically like this tacky glue on one side and then like almost what feels like parchment paper on the other side. And this is what I'm gonna use to adhere my quilt piece to the back of my jacket um, with an iron and heat. And that's it, it's super easy guys. And then I'm just gonna stitch around the edges of this um, quilt piece with my sewing machine to make sure that it fully adheres. And then here I have some paper that I'm going to be using to make sure it doesn't get on my towel that I'm using to iron on. Then I have my quilt square pieces that I um, am going to be ironing on. So yeah, and then I just have some scissors for extra supplies, a lint roller, and my heat and bond. So from here, we'll get right into the project. First thing I'm going to do is to cut out the heat and bond um, cut off this little 
scrap piece here because it's too small for the project I need. And then I'm gonna lay out my quilt piece on there and I'm gonna cut it out so it is the correct size um, for exactly the size that I need for that Dresden quilt plate, which is the proper name for it. It's a Dresden quilt plate. <laughs> One thing that you're going to want to note here when you use the heat and bond is to make sure that you adhere your piece to the correct side. So I'm over here, I'm taking off all the little loose threads on the back of this because when I did the seam ripping, there was lots of little tiny loose threads that were on the back of this. So I'm just getting all of that off to begin with here. But then when I go to actually bond this Dresden quilt plate to the heat and bond, I'm gonna end up flipping it over so that way the side with the raw edges, the not pretty side, is on the tacky side of the heat and bond. So there's like a shiny side with like more of the parchment paper on it, and then there's a tacky side that has the glue on it. You're gonna wanna make sure that the downside, like the ugly, not pretty side, is flush with like the sticky side, right? So that way when it bonds, the glue is on the back of the item. So that's like the biggest thing to remember when you use a heat and bond is don't bind it to the wrong side. So now that I have it placed here, I'm gonna trim right around the edges and I'm gonna try to cut close to the edge, but I'm not gonna be like super particular about getting every single curve because later when I actually go to iron it down, I'll have an opportunity to trim it really, really closely to make sure that there's no extra glue residue there. So now that I have it like, um, you know, trimmed out, now I can um, begin getting my paper ready and laying that down on my towel so that way I can actually iron it. And my iron is plugged in at this moment too, it's been heating up, so that's just something else to consider when you go to do your project is you know heat up your iron ahead of time. Um, I had to learn the hard way that this paper is necessary. This is just contractor's paper that I picked up from Lowe's. I actually use this for wrapping my Poshmark and eBay packages. Um, so I had it on hand and it was just convenient for me, but you could also use parchment paper here or really any type of paper that you have that's large enough. Um, the reason I recommend using this is because the first time I ironed down my Dresden quilt plate with heat and bond, I didn't have this and some of the sticky residue on the very edges of this stuck to my towel and it kind of like ruined the towel. So now that I have it face down, I'm going to iron on this side. Now you could also put a piece of paper over top of this too and a lot of people recommend doing that who work with heat and bond. I didn't just because this is like my crafting iron. I literally don't use this for anything else. So I wasn't super concerned about that. But if you have an iron that you use for like ironing your good clothes, you might wanna put another layer of paper in between the iron and the heat and bond. Okay, notice I'm literally just setting it down for about three seconds, three to five seconds. And I'm just pushing down on each area. I'm not sliding it around because you don't want it to move. You're lifting it up and setting it down multiple times until it is fully bonded and I have done most of it there's like a small area that I haven't completed yet so you're like lifting up and setting it down and then after that you're gonna want to just like kind of go along the edges and make sure that it is fully adhered all the way around and yeah I just kind of go up and down multiple times once you're sure that it's pretty much fully adhered you're going to carefully peel it up um, and you'll notice right here, see how there's some pieces that stuck on the paper. If I hadn't put that paper there, that would have been on my towel. So that would have been bad. But now you can see that the Dresden quilt plate is fully adhered to the heat and bond. And it's almost got more of like a paper-like texture now. It makes the fabric more, I don't know, it gives it more body, makes it more firm, which is good because this is very fragile vintage fabric. So yeah, I think it just adds some more firmness to it so it'll withstand time on the back of the denim jacket. So that's why I think this step is necessary and not just sewing this to the back of the jacket because this vintage fabric is pretty fragile. So anyway, right now I'm just trimming out those edges right along the edge of the Dresden quilt plate and just going with each scallop and curve and cutting off the, you know, the tiny little pieces. So this is the um, the tedious stage, I would say, before I was just cutting in a circle in general, and now I'm trimming off all of the edges to make sure all of that glue is off before I um, end up peeling off the back of this. Okay, so now we're ready to carefully peel off the back of this heat and bond sheet. And this is where you'll know whether or not the 
piece is fully adhered because if it is fully adhered, it'll be easy to peel this off and the almost like clear glue part won't be coming off with it. So here I am peeling it off and um, I mean, it's easy, but it, it didn't come off in full pieces or anything. So I'm just peeling it off here and throwing away that part that looks like parchment paper. And now there's like almost like a jelly-like substance on the back of the Dresden quilt plate, and that is the heat and bond. So now it is ready to be adhered to the back of the jacket because that glue is fully adhered to the back of the Dresden quilt plate, and now it can be applied to the back of the denim jacket. So that will be our next step. Okay, so now I've got the denim jacket and what I'm trying to do here is just lay it as flat as possible on top of the towel and make sure that I lint roll it really good so that there's nothing being ironed underneath the dressed and quilt plate that I don't want there. Any fibers or animal hair or anything like that. You want to make sure that's all removed. And now it's just time to position the dressed and quilt plate and I have noticed that it does look a little better kind of centered on the upper end of the jacket, not completely centered in the exact middle of the jacket. So I placed it there and I kind of just eyeballed it and said, you know, that looks pretty good. I did finagle it a little bit off camera, but um, yeah, I didn't measure it. If you're a perfectionist, look away now because I am not a perfectionist. I just, you know, do the best I can and sometimes I don't measure things. So there you have it. Anyway, I got this fabric because you're gonna want some fabric or some paper or something to put over top of this when you iron it. So I did cut a piece of fabric down to size to put over this. And I'm also gonna iron the jacket too to make sure that there are no wrinkles in this because when you adhere this piece to it, you don't want a wrinkle behind it. So here I am repositioning it again, once again, just eyeballing it and not measuring it like a professional probably would. But you know, this is how I roll, so don't judge. <laughs> don't come at me. And then I'm gonna get that piece of fabric and I'm gonna put it on top of it. But you know what, I should probably have ironed that first too, but I didn't because you know, not a perfectionist here. Sorry folks. Um, am I gonna iron it? Did I iron it? What? Oh, I'm ironing it. Look at that. I totally forgot that I did that. <laughs> also, I'm sorry about the view, guys, and that you can't see my face or anything, but this is, you know, my first tutorial ever, so please excuse my knees. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do here is iron in the same way that I did earlier, um, really going up and down. You did see I did some back and forth motion just a second ago. Don't recommend that. Just lift your iron up and down in about mm, three to five second increments and really adding that pressure down. I'm putting some pressure on it every time. You can see I'm kind of pushing my arm into it every time I iron down. So that way it really adheres. I'm over here picking up lint because I'm not a perfectionist, but lint bothered me apparently. <laughs> so just lifting up and down all over the Dresden quilt plate, making sure that it is fully adhered. And um, later on, I'm gonna take off this piece and just really check each area, each corner and make sure that it fully adheres because sometimes the edges don't fully adhere and I have to just kind of go in with the iron and just make sure that the edge is fully attached. So I'm gonna pull it off here and you know what, like I said, I use this iron just for crafting. So here I am applying to the edges without any protection on it. So some glue could potentially come up on my iron here, but I'm not concerned. But did you see how I just lifted up that little corner on one of the Dresden and Quilt Plays plate edges? It has like those little scallops. Some of those little scallops don't completely adhere. So I'm just trying to make sure that all of those little corners are fully adhered just so it will stay in place and I'm just kind of peeling up, making sure that it's all fully adhered. Also, one thing I didn't say earlier is my iron, it's set on like the cotton slash like linen setting. So it's, it's set on a pretty high heat. Um, I think that's what the heat and bond instructions said. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, that worked for me, so you know. Now, if I was just making this for personal use and I knew I wasn't going to wash it a lot or get a ton of wear out of it, I could just leave it as is now, but I wanna add that extra like layer of security and make sure that it's really well crafted and I wanna make sure I sew the edges later. So that'll be my next step. But before we get to that next step, I thought I'd just kind of go through my steps one more time with you guys and a very sped up way so you can kind of see exactly what I did one more time just in case you are a visual learner and you want to see again. So yeah, I am actually bulk creating these today because I am going to be selling them in my Poshmark 
closet. So I'll have that linked down below if you're interested in checking these out and um, liking one, making me an offer, any of that. But yeah, I'm actually selling these jackets that I'm making today. I have made one already for myself and I have lots of quilt squares left to make a bunch more. So you could definitely be using this project to um, make something like this similar. You don't have to necessarily use Dresden quilt plates. You could use any piece of fabric. You could use vintage quilt squares. You could use just a really cool piece of fabric that you found. I really like reusing vintage things or really repurposing things in general. So, but try to think like outside the box, you could um, adhere pieces to denim jeans. Um, I actually did a project where I took some of these Dresden quilt plates and I put them on the back of pockets of overalls and I adhered to the back of those pockets. Um, actually, no, it was a pair of shorts. I haven't done the overalls yet, but that was an idea I have. But there's just so many different things you could do with this project. So really like, use your creativity and you know watch what i do but then you know make whatever you want out of this and if you do end up making something after watching this tutorial please tag me on instagram at chelsea sunshine i would love to see what you make and it would just like make by day to know that like someone watched this tutorial felt inspired and made a denim jacket or some type of project themselves and i do want to shout out the youtube channel that I was inspired by and I will link her down in the description as well so you can go check her out but her channel name is Kat Williams and she did a bunch of upcycling denim jacket videos on her channel um, that were just very inspiring to me and she's the one who used the heat and bond and she actually did a video where she tested lots of different other types of glue and ways of bonding fabric to the back of jackets and she discovered that the heat and bond worked best for what she wanted to accomplish. So yeah, that's why I decided to use that in my projects. But anyway, um, go check out her channel, give her a follow and maybe get inspired by her videos as well. So I'll link that down in the description. Okay, time for the next step and that is just sewing down the edges. Now the first time I made one of these jackets, I actually hand sewed the edges. Um, and I just like went in and just used some embroidery floss and I actually used some pink embroidery floss and I hand sew the edges and that was very time consuming and very tedious. And after that, I was like, I am not doing this on any more jackets. The next jacket I do, I'm going to sew it. So that's what you see me doing here. Um, you definitely can hand sew it, but I think the reason it was so tedious is because the heat and bond makes the fabric kind of stiff and every time you're sticking your needle through that, it's like, it's just a little more tension. And um, that tension along with the denim jacket just makes it a little difficult to hand sew it, but it's definitely doable if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't you know, have access to one. So what I did the first time I sewed the quilt plates to the back is I just used a straight stitch and I think that worked just fine. I actually made several jackets with just a straight stitch and um, it was fine. But I decided to be a little extra on this set of denim jackets and I did a zigzag stitch instead. I think it just adds like an extra layer of texture to the jacket and I kind of like the way it looks. So if you look really close, you can see that um, I'm sewing and following like the edges of the Dresden quilt plate with each scallop. I'm kind of moving the sewing machine to really get the edge, but then you can see the zigzag pattern. I think it just looks really cool. It adds like another extra layer of texture, makes it look a little bit more professional. So the zigzag stitch in a really tight setting, I feel like is the best, but I mean, you do whatever works for you. If you don't have a sewing machine, just hand sew this part and I think it will still look great. If you have a sewing machine that's similar to mine, very low tech, you can kind of look at my knobs and see how I have it set up. Um, I have the zigzag set on a five and the um, width or whatever set on like a one. I don't really understand how these settings work. My friend Anne actually had to help me understand that. So I'm not like a sewing expert. I had to finagle and play around with a little bit. And normally I like to test it on like another piece of fabric before I like commit to start sewing just to make sure I did it correctly. So anyway, you notice that I like fed the denim jacket all the way up through the sewing machine. I think that's like the hardest part is like when there's so much bulk and you're trying to like squeeze it through the sewing machine. But um, when I sew these, I start with 
at the center. So in the center of the Dresden quilt plate, I do like to sew right around that like center part of like the flower looking piece just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then from there, then I'll move to the outer pieces and sew along the edge. So that way I'm adhering or giving it some extra security by sewing in the center and then doing right along the edges. So that way it sews the edges down as well. All right, so there we have it, the completed jacket. Um, so now all I need to do is trim off these little threads here on the inside and outside, just making sure there's no little hanging threads on the jacket. And then I'm going to photograph it for my Poshmark closet, get these listed, and I'll be sure to link these down below if you wanna shop my Poshmark closet. Feel free to make me an offer on them, and I love to negotiate. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope this inspired you to maybe craft something or upcycle something on your own. Have a great day. Bye.